Hey guys, Dawn here from Seasonal Designs. Today we are going to take a look at the inside of the greenhouse. If you have been watching my channel, you know that this is kind of part of a three-part series that I did on the greenhouse. And the first one really was all about the building of it. Really, there was nothing here before and really starting from the ground up. The second one I did was all about the landscaping and the plantings that we put in. And so now this third one, we're gonna go inside the greenhouse and we are gonna talk about some of the mechanics. And we're also gonna talk about some of the ways I hope to use the greenhouse. We really hope that it is a multifunctional space. I would like to grow in here. I would love to do some seed starting in here. I would like to force some of my bulbs in here, but we also want to be able to entertain in here and really just enjoy the space. So I'd like to share it with you now, come on in. Well, I guess we can start by talking about the front doors. We decided to go with nice, large double doors just for the ease of moving big things in and out of the greenhouse. In springtime, when I want to bring all of the containers that I planted up with two of the bulbs out here on my big old cart, I just open these big old doors up and bring it in. So as you can see, I'm getting things set up for a little dinner party, but we really need to take a look back at how we got to this point. As you might recall from the first greenhouse video we did, we decided to put a concrete floor in. Super easy to clean. But we couldn't just leave it like that, so we decided to have it ground and polished. The process took all day and really into the evening. And he started with a rougher grind and then just kept changing out these grinding pads to finer ones until he got a really pretty amazing polished concrete floor. It's not slippery when it's wet, which is so nice, but it really just looks like glass. We love the way it turned out. We also had the daunting task of choosing a tile for both of the long walls. I say daunting because there are just way too many pretty tiles to choose from. We had a hard time focusing and choosing just one. But our friend Mary set us in the right direction of pulling the frame color down to the walls and we were able to focus and choose a tile. Of course, our first choice never came in, so we had to make a second choice. And unfortunately, we ended up just not loving it. Thankfully, we only put it up on one of the short walls and then quickly took it down. Now we have to grind that? We went back to one of the very first tiles that we saw and really kind of forgot about. When we brought a large sample board home, we knew it was the one. We took some time to lay it all out how we wanted before installing. Thankfully, Mahabi has done plenty of tile work in his time, so he was able to get the tile up pretty quickly. The tile just seemed to say greenhouse to us with the leaves and the flowers and such, and we are super happy with the way it turned out. Next up, we were finally ready for the electrician to come back in and hook up the breaker box, put in all the outlets, and hook up the automatic roof vents and the bling. I enjoyed laying out the bling for the chandelier. It really added so much to the space and I just love it. On a cool summer evening, we had our very first dinner party in the warm and cozy glass house. So let's talk about mechanics. There are two ceiling fans, both of them right above 
a vent. There's one and the second one is right above me. They turn two directions, obviously one for pushing air down, one for pulling air up. And there are two remote control. The other thing that we have a remote control for is the chandelier. And the chandelier can go on, it can go off, and it can also dim. All of these things um, have a switch in our panel here. We do have dual outlet here, heavy duty. But then there are outlets on each of the walls. And then the other thing that is really important in here is this control panel for the roof fence. And if you come in here, you can see you can turn, you can open it, you can stop and you can close it. You can do that remotely or you can set it so that it opens at a certain temperature and closes at a certain temperature, or you can have it open and close based on humidity. One of the things I have to point out is our electrician was fantastic. He hid all of the electrical work as best he could. You know, you can't run this behind any walls because it's, it's all glass or concrete, but he ran this all the way up, painted it so it matched the frame of our greenhouse, Ryan, it all the way up here, the only place you really see it is a little bit right here and a little bit right there. Otherwise, it's hidden to everything that you see. He did a great job. You know, I am in some greenhouses and I don't think people take that into consideration and they just run their electrical in that kind of steel colored uh, tubing that you run it in and it sta kind of stands out like a sore thumb. Um, so he did a fantastic job, something to consider. The other thing that we have in here are obviously some windows. And we decided that we wanted to, to control the windows in the front and have them look a little bit nicer. And so these close all the way up. So they have just kind of a nice clean look. And then you can open them by yourself to let a little fresh air in. The windows in the back here open and close on their own. So these are kind of interesting. This here is has wax in it. And as that wax warms up with the temperature, these windows open. And so there are two of these on the back of the greenhouse. Let's talk about the Lopi stove. It is gas that we will be utilizing to heat our greenhouse when we need to. Uh, it is, I believe, 45,000 BTUs. It's not hooked up yet. Um, it took quite a while to come. Uh, we certainly don't need it hooked up now, but it will have the logs in it. It has remote control. It is going to vent from here, and that vent is going to go up and going to vent right out here at the top. Right next door to that is something I'm quite excited about, is my traditional potting bench from England. I ordered it in April. It is now uh, the end of June. It finally arrived. I'm super excited. My husband was able to put it together without directions. I think it's gonna be really cool. So there's a piece of metal that will go in here. It'll sit on this edge. And that's where you put either your pebbles or your lava rock, and then you can put pots on it or trays of plants or whatever you want. And then below is where we will put some nice wood slats uh, so we can use um, it for supplies. So here's my other option for growing. This is a potting bench that my hubby found on Etsy and they were super great to work with. They made it two size. It did come with a back, but we didn't want the back, so they made it without the back. It has a metal top on it, so you can get it wet. Um, it has a kind of, it's kind of neat. It has a tall bar here, some hooks in the front. Right now I have it, you know, dressed up, but I have used it as a buffet for a dinner party in here and I will also be using it for planting. So really kind of cool, multi-purpose. Right now on the polished concrete floor, we, since we're not really using this for growing in the middle of summer, we did put down an area rug, kind of absorbs some, some of the sound and kind of gives it a nice cozy look. But 
Come spring, if we're super growing in here, this can get either rolled up and moved out of the way, or it can just get moved underneath the chairs that are over on the far wall. Because there's plenty of room to do both in here, but this is where everything drains. And then it's on the side of the greenhouse where my potting bench is. One of the things I did want to mention is, you know, in these really kind of neat Cape Cod style greenhouses that are very popular, this particular greenhouse made by BC Greenhouses out of Canada, again, I think you recall from my first video, we purchased this greenhouse from Wisconsin Greenhouse Company and they installed it for us. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about BC Greenhouses was the distance between these two metal frames. It's 24 inches and it just gives you this really nice kind of inside outside look. This was uh, just one of the things that I really loved. I should also mention water. While we do have gas and we do have electric, we also have water run to the greenhouse. It is not hooked up yet. That is the where the water has come into the greenhouse and we will get that hooked up soon <laughs> because it would be nice to have. One of the other options I did want to talk about is that you can get the roof glass tinted and that will block some of the sunlight. And I really do think it makes a difference. We chose um, this kind of, it's kind of a brown, brownish, bronzy color. It looked really nice with our greenhouse. It doesn't block a ton of the heat, but it does block some. We had two, three days that were in the very high 90s, super hot, sun all day. And the temperature only got to about 89 degrees inside the greenhouse, which is pretty good considering this thing sits literally in full sun all day. So again, there are varying um, degrees of, of tint that you can get in different colors, but it is an option and something that I highly recommend. You can also get shade cloth, and there are many different ways to use a shade cloth. Some people think you should put it over the outside of your greenhouse, over the roof. Some people think you should put it on the inside. We are gonna go with the inside option and we are currently looking at getting some shade curtains made. that will um, that we can use in the inside of the greenhouse for additional shading should we want to use it well i hope you guys hit the subscribe button that's that little bell and you'll be notified whenever i post another video i will be doing some projects here in the greenhouse as well as some plantings and i'd like to be able to share that stuff with you we're also going to do like a midsummer garden tour Hopefully some of the plantings will be larger, as well as some tours of my existing gardens. Thank you guys so much for tagging along on this three-part series, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.